I want you to turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, in verse number 13, and we're going to get started here. Let me pray, and I want to get into this here. Um, let's pray here. Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done for us. Lord, we pray that this would strengthen your saints to understand what these other people believe and how it's false according to the scriptures. And just the history of these restoration movements and their teachings that are contrary to the scriptures and why, where they come from and the root of it, Lord. Help us understand that. And then, Lord, others that hear this online, others that will hear this out there that may be trapped in this cult, Lord, I pray that you would use it to call them to repentance and bring them out of the snare of the devil. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I this is very, in my opinion, this first one is very exhaustive, and there's a reason for it, because if I'm going to say something, I definitely want to prove it, because anytime you try to reveal some things about false teachings and false doctrine, if you're not very thorough with it, what happens is you get, you know, you people try to use side things to try to um, destroy what you're teaching, to negate what you're teaching. And so they can get away with their false doctrine and their their um, heresy. Now, I will say this. The, the title is meant to be very to be very forward, like all of my titles are when I deal with cults and things like that. Uh, if you remember the occultism of Mormonism, when I did that one, well, this one's called the occult, the occult history of the Je- Jehovah's Witnesses, and they are a watchtower of witches. And I'm going to prove to you today that they are a watchtower of witches. Now, when I say that, I'm not talking about the people that just show up to the to the to the Kingdom Hall. What a name! Um, but uh, we'll talk about that again sometime. Uh, but I'm not talking about them. I'm not talking about Kingdom Hall attendees. They're stra- most of them are trapped in a cult and don't have a clue. However, you know, the higher level people in that organization, and it is an organization, it is not a church, it is an organization, it is a business, it is a multi-million dollar business. So, anyway, but it's important to study the roots and the history of something in order to find out where it came from. Because if some guy comes in and he just says, well, the Bible's wrong, everybody's been teaching it wrong for thousands of years, and I teach it right. Well, that's what the Jehovah's Witnesses said. That's what Russell said. He basically said that you're all wrong, and I'm going to show you what's right. Well, if someone's going to do that, then it's important for us to scrutinize exactly what they say and where they got it from. It's important for us to study that out and say, okay, well, where did you come from and where do you get that? Do you get it from the Bible? Well, you're going to find out that Russell did not get it from the Bible. Because if had Russell got it from the Bible, he'd be teaching fundamental doctrine. And he doesn't teach, fun, he never taught fundamental doctrine. Him nor his predecessors ever taught, um, those that came after him, ever taught fundamental Bible doctrine. They taught, in a nutshell, they basically taught Mystery Babylon. That's what they taught. That same spirit of the whore, that same spirit of harlots, that same spirit of Babylon, they taught it. Now, where did they get it from? That's what's important. And where do they derive their teachings from? Now, this is not going to be exhaustive on Russell today or on Rutherford. It is going to deal with their era of the Jehovah's Witnesses uh, of of running the Watchtower. And the reason that's important is for for us to understand the occult side of this. This is not the historical. I'm not giving you the entire historical background. I'm going to do that next. And then we're also going to talk about their Bible version. And I make no bones about it when I tell you very emphatically, very clearly, that their Bible version came from fallen angels or devils that translated it for them and to them. Very clearly, and I will prove it from their own words. Exactly what they say. Then, now, let me ask you a question. Keep this in your mind as as we talk, or as we go through this. If a fallen angel or a devil gave you a translation of the Scriptures, and I examined that translation of the Scriptures, and I saw that, well, for some reason, this translation disagrees with the traditional text, 
And for some reason, this translation uh, tries to, attempts to destroy and erase the deity of Christ. For some reason, this translation doesn't like Hebrews 1, John 1, 1 John 1, Colossians 1. Why? Why does it change? Why is he a God and not God manifest in the flesh? Well, there's a reason for that. Because it was translated by devils, which I'm going to prove to you shortly, but then we're going to get into their version some other day, and I'm going to show you. And this is going to make a lot of friends. But I, I hope that people will listen that are in the watchtower. I hope they find They're going to find it. They're going to find it. And then I hope they refute it. Because I'm just using their own words. It's their resources. They put them out there. But guess what? Modern-day Jehovah's Witnesses don't have these. They don't show them this. There's a reason. All right. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Verse number 13. For such are false, pro false apostles, deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Now that's important, that transformation of the angel of light. You're going to see how important that is with Russell. And if you look at that pyramid, you'll see how important it is if, if you understand anything about a pyramid, which I'm going to show you. It makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Because when you look at that, do you see one pyramid or do you see two? There's two there. See the capstone? Mm-hmm. So, remember this light is talked about here. It says he's transformed into an angel of light. He's not really one, right? Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. All right, so the occult history of the Jehovah's Witnesses. This is Charles Taze Russell, pyramidologist. He was fascinated. Charles was absolutely fascinated with pyramids. He is the founder of the Watchtower. He is the founder of the JWs, and he was absolutely 100% infatuated and carried away and derived much of his Bible doctrine, in parentheses, from the pyramid. He just looks kind of spooky to me. I don't know. Right? Yeah. This is Ruth <laughs> This is Rutherford. He was the he was the one that followed Russell after Russell Judge Rutherford they called him. He was the one that followed him and he really popularized the watchtower the JWs. He really made them. He really made them big. Um, the devil really used this man to propagate the lies, and you'll find out a little bit about him in a little while. But that's him preaching somewhere. I mean, when you look at him, you think, "Oh, that must be just a preacher that's preaching God's word," and he, he you know, he must be a good guy, right? Wrong. Religious deception is the worst deception. So what I'm going to show you here, it, it, it's likely to shock you, all right? It really is. So that's why I put that picture up there, because this guy's shocked. <laughs> but it, it, should, it should, can you see Dave over here? Look, Dave, you're in the wrong spot. Would you get to a place you can see? What's the matter with you anyway? Okay. <laughs> but if, if you look at this here, he's shocked, right? You're going to be shocked. The Bible's warned us about false religions, and Satan has a relentless attack against the truth. Absolutely relentless. He will never stop. He will never stop uh, fighting the truth. But he does not try to erase the truth. He only tries to pervert the truth. Because erasing the truth cannot happen. Perverting the truth is enough to cause people to go to hell. Many religious people are in hell today. People that have religious devils, mostly never get them exercised out. They never get delivered. Religious devils are the worst kinds. The worst kind of people I've ever seen are ones with religious devils. They are the absolute worst kind. 
But sometimes Satan, he comes as an angel of light, right? This is where he comes. It is most da- it's his most dangerous tool. It is his greatest advantage is to come and bring light to men. He brings this perceived or this pretended light, right? He's that light bearer, right? And he brings that light. He is the light of the pyramid. He is the light of illumination. He is the illumination for the, for the Gnostics. He is the illumination. He is the capstone. He is the Antichrist, right? He is where they derive their gnosis or their knowledge from, is from him. And that's why it's so dangerous. So what is the occult history of the Watchtower? Jehovah's Witnesses, they claim, first of all, to oppose occult involvement. They absolutely claim they oppose it. In fact, they have many writings in their writings. Rutherford and Russell both wrote many times against the occult, but they were secretly practicing the same things, which is going to be proven today. They were practicing the same things they were preaching against. Listen, all they did was call them something different, but they practiced the same thing. It's kind of like those those false apostles, those deceitful workers that, that change the definition of repentance but still use the word repent? Yeah, those guys. Same thing. But when it comes to, listen, when it comes to accepting spiritualistic inspirations, they just redefine the word. They said, they, they said and over and over again, I'm going to show you, the Watchtower claimed, Russell and Rutherford both claimed, they both claimed their inspiration came from angels or Holy Spirit. Not the Holy Spirit, but Holy Spirit. And they said angels. Angels taught us. Well, what does the Bible say about angels teaching you anything? Right, it says, though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel than that which you have received, let him be accursed. And so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which you have received, let him be accursed. Where did Joseph Smith get his gnosis from, his light from? Who brought him? Who brought him the light, remember? The, the angel Moroni. Macaroni, that guy. He said he said the angel an angel brought him the golden ticket. The golden plates. Right? Right? Brought him that and, and brought him the light. Wait a minute. Why is this never enough for these guys? Why is this never I'll tell you why cuz they can't do their satanic garbage with this book like that. It's much harder to do that because the truth shines, the light shines in darkness. And they don't want you to have the light. So they get you away from this book by saying, well, God, God told me this. You know how many people I've had tell me that? Well, God told me this. Well, God's leading me here. Well, God's leading me there. Well, God wants me to do this. Well, God wants me to do that. Really? Well, why doesn't God say that in his word? I'll tell you why. Because they're following another spirit, another gospel, another Jesus. Listen, friend, you got to break this programming that's been done in America to where every time somebody says Jesus, they mean the Jesus of the Bible. Don't you, you ask them, who's Jesus? What Jesus are you talking about? That's what you ask them. My friend, what Jesus are you referring to? Which Christ are you referring to? Look, the Watchtower has been involved in occult activity historically. That's what the devils do. They never erase the word. They only change the definition because that's how Satan operates. We just went over these verses. But though we, this is important, though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you. We're supposed to, wait a minute now, first of all, this Bible doesn't say you're going to be like having angels visit you and come down. It says angels unawares maybe might come, and you don't know who they are, and they do something kind or something, and, and then they're gone, and you don't ever know it. You don't know who they are. Well, these guys are saying, no, nah, we just sit around all day and man, talk to angels. You know, Bill Schneblin said the same thing. He said, me and my wife, we were in the, we were in the, in the bedroom, and all of a sudden, or in, the, in our living room, and all of a sudden two angels knocked on the door, came in, sat down with us, and started teaching us. Bill? Them are devils. 
and you're still a witch. Plain and simple, you're a witch. Tell them. Write a book about it. I don't care. <clears throat> right, expose who they are. As we said before, so say it now again. If any man preach any of the gospel to you that which you have received, let him be accursed. Charles... Taze Russell was obsessed with the Great Pyramid. He was absolutely obsessed with this pyramid. Totally cat. In fact, the interesting thing about this is that he thought this, he thought more of this than anything. Now, why? Well, because, listen, with, I want to, I want to, I want to explain something to you. With symbols, there are people that, that have, that may, on a building somewhere have a symbol, but they, they don't teach any occultic teachings, okay? They don't know what they're doing. They don't have, no, they don't have any clues. Some mason, and I don't mean mason, like, well, sometimes they're masons that build their buildings and put things on them or whatever, but sometimes people don't have a clue what any of those things mean, right? They just don't have a clue. But when you are obsessed with these type of symbols and you teach gnosis or you teach these teachings, you know exactly what you're doing. And that's the difference here. Russell knew exactly what he was doing. And he used that symbol as a calling card. That pyramid was a calling card to call them all in. And he called them in. Charles was one of the first dispensationalists to be obsessed with the pyramid. But he wasn't the only one. On the left, you'll see Clarence Larkin. I have Clarence Larkin's book in there. I have a lot of his books. I've read a few of them. I read one on the spirit world. It was actually pretty decent. But um, I don't agree with everything he said, but it was pretty decent. Uh, but Clarence Larkin wrote about the pyramid. And, they, and, and at the time, there were a few teachers out there. Joseph Seiss, I think, was another one. I, have, I think I have his book, Miracles in Stone, in, in there. But he, they had this fascination with the pyramid. And they believed that the pyramid and the measurements of the pyramid had something to do with when Christ was coming back and the end of the world. Now, you can look all the way through this book, and you'll not find that God used the pyramid to tell you what the, what the end of the world, when the end of the world was coming. In fact, you'll see against that that God says no man will know the hour or the day, right? But anyway, so Clarence Larkin, he, he and I borrowed this from Hoggard, by the way. I talked to him this week, and he sent me this. I, I asked him a little about it because he did some research on this. This picture here was borrowed from him. But he said here, Clarence Larkin, he has a description. And by the way, I believe that Larkin ripped this off from Russell. <laughs> I think he stole it from him. <laughs> he stole, like, like, most of the ideas Larkin took from him. Anyway. But you'll see the entryways and everything are measured here, okay? Um, they're, they're measured there for a reason because they think it has something to do with the end times. Um, from Russell's book, The Divine Plan of the Ages, does that sound familiar? Dispensational Truth by Clarence Larkin is, is basically that. Lewis Talbot wrote a book on the Divine Plan of the Ages uh, long before. And I don't, it wasn't a cultic that I, I don't remember him saying anything. He just, he was a dispensationalist. That's fine. I mean, I have some subtle disagreements with each one of those men. But this stuff is like way off the board nuts. All right, the Great Pyramid. From Russell's book, it's the divine plan of the ages. So you can see that they are, they, they are trying to measure out the end of the world through these pictures, through these measurements. Now, first of all, what spirit is Egypt? It's the world. It's Babylon. Right? It's Babylon. It has nothing to do with the Bible. All right, now you can't read this, but I'll read it to you. In the late 19th century, a number of Bible students became interested in the mysteries of the Great Pyramid. One such individual was Charles Taze Russell, founder of the group later known as the Jehovah's Witnesses. In his book, Thy Kingdom Come, Volume 3, originally published in 1890, Russell goes into great detail of the various measurements inside the pyramid using what he called pyramid inches. So he made up his own. He's like, well, I think we'll call them pyramid inches. Well, that's so his theory works, right? Wrong. It still didn't work. Okay. In effort to prove that the construction of the pyramid was inspired by God. Okay. Does it, if you know anything about pyramids, if you know anything about Egypt, if you know anything about any of those things, you would know full well that heaven, when it comes, is not a pyramid. When the city comes down, it's how many square? Think about it. Anyway, so... 
He used pyramid in effort to prove that the construction of the pyramid was inspired by God to stand as a corroborating witness to the Bible, as well as reveal the dates of Christ's second coming. So he's saying that the pyramid, the pyramid is designed for you to believe in God. Which God? Do the Egyptians see the pyramid and believe in the God of the Bible? Uh, no. But they do believe in another God. And that's the one that these guys were preparing the way for, that they were making his paths straight or crooked, whichever way you want to look at it, because they're witches. Okay. Russell was very specific that all the data he utilizes, as well as the diagrams, were from a book by Professor Piazza Smith. You ever heard of him? Piazza Smith, he was an English scholar and an Egyptologist. He included it in Thy Kingdom Come. Is he, there's even a letter from the professor approving of Russell's utilization of his research regarding the measurements of the period, pyramid, Russell. He said this. He said, the Bible never tells us to look at a pyramid or anything else for the sign of his coming, nor to ever look at Egypt where the spirit of Babylon... Wait, that was me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got that wrong. Here's this quote. So then if we measure the backward down, the first ascending passage to its injunction with the entrance passage, we shall have a fixed date to mark upon the downward passage. This measure is 1,542 inches and indicates the year B.C. 1542 as the date of that point. What does that have to do with anything? This is what I said afterwards. Sorry, I put that in the wrong spot. The Bible never tells us to look at a pyramid or anything else for the sign of his coming, nor to even look to Egypt, where the spirit of Babylon was, to understand the Bible better. We've never been told to do that. In fact, we're told to escape from Egypt, get out of Egypt, leave Egypt, don't turn back, don't look back. Then measuring down the entrance passage from that point to find the distance to the entrance of the pit, representing the great trouble and destruction with which this age is to close. When evil will be overthrown from the power, we find it to be 3,416 inches, symbolizing 3,416 years from the above date, B.C. 1542. The calculation shows A.D. 1874 is marking the beginning of the period of trouble. So he said the tribulation started in 1874. Well, his might have. Right? For 1542 years, B.C. plus 1870, or beginning of the time of the trouble, such as was not since there was a nation, he said. No, never, nor ever shall be afterward. Thus it will be noted that this witness fully corroborates the Bible testimony in this subject. So he just made the figures up. He just said, he just pulled them out of thin air. Here we go. But there's a small problem, however. If we look at Smith's calculations, his actual diagrams, we see that the distance of the entrance passage from the points that Russell's refers, referring to actually is 3,461 inches, not 3,416. So his measurements were even off. Whether we merely transpose those two numbers as an honest mistake or by design, we can't really be proven one way or another. We don't know what he did. But it is suspicious, he said, however, that the only things that Russell deleted from the diagram that he published was the entire distance of the entrance passage, thus making it impossible for anyone who did not possess Smith's actual data to refute him. So he left the measurements out so you couldn't refute him. Why would you do that if you were right? Interesting, huh? So essentially, Russell, he shrunk the pyramid, 45 pyramid inches, <laughs> to make the passageway fit with his chronologies. Russell later revised his numbers in 1910 version. Why did he do that? Well, because his prophecy failed. Oops. Russell says this, so that if we measure backward down the first ascending passage, would anybody keep listening to this idiot? If you said this to me, I would be like, okay, you're dumb. Okay, you're, you're just dumb, all right? Stop it. You're either dumb or I'm dumb for thinking you're, you're, you're serious. Do you know how many thousands of people followed this? I'm not kidding you. So then if we measure backward down the first ascending passage to its junction with the entrance passage, we shall have a fixed date to mark upon the downward passage. This measure is 1,542 inches and indicates the year 1542 as the date of that point. Then measuring down the entrance passage from that point to find the distance to the entrance of the pit, 
representing the great trouble and destruction with which this age is to close. When evil will be overthrown by power, we find it to be 3,457 inches. So he goes on, thus the pyramid witnesses that the close of 1914 will be the beginning of the time of trouble. Wait a minute, Russell. I thought it was 1874. No, changed my mind. It's 1914, 1915. For 15 years, 15, 1542 years BC plus 1915 years AD equals 3,457. Thus, the pyramid witnesses at the close of 1914 will be the beginning of the time of trouble, such as was not since there was a nation. No, nor ever will shall be afterward. And thus, it will be noted that this witness fully corroborates the Bible testimony. So, so he just revises words. Like he didn't say them. Oops. So when Russell was wrong, he repented, right? He said, okay, I was, I'm sorry. I was wrong. I repent. I'm not going to do that stuff anymore. Nope. Since 1874 was a fading as a memory and had passed without significant incident, Russell was left with the very embarrassing prospect of having to explain why great tribulation didn't come upon the earth in the subsequent years. The chronologies that he had been publishing in the meantime utilized the year 1914 A.D. as the fateful year when God was going to punish the apostate church and pour out his wrath upon the earth. Thus, Russell inserted into the pyramid chronology another arbitrary number. So he changed it, right? Charles Taze Russell went to his grave believing that the Great Pyramid was the Bible in stone. So he said... Built as witnesses, witness to the chronologies he espoused. Regarding his shifting chronology based on the Bible, most of us will grant that he had a change of opinion on certain verses and adjusted his calculations based on his accumulated knowledge. The Great Pyramid is a little different, however, since the stone passageways do not generally grow or shrink at command. The only accounting of the changes one can give, then, is that Russell was deliberately and knowingly fabricating numbers to support his theories. So he's a fraud. He's a liar. Russell, however, maintained the divine origin of the Great Pyramid. Listen, and taught it dogmatically. The Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, Society apparently endorsed the, the idea even after Russell's death. There is perhaps no more telling a witness to this than the following image, which is the monument at Russell in his grave that the Watchtower erected. Okay, now what Bible preacher would want that at their grave? This is his grave. Kind of weird, huh? They say he was the prophet and the last warning to the Laodicean church. He was the messenger to the Laodicean church. Russell was. See that Rosicrucian sign up at the top there? Yeah. Nice guy. But let's talk about that a little bit, that sign there. You see that pyramid again? Freemasonry. Now, what you saw there earlier was the capstone, okay? You see that at the top? See that capstone up there? Now, the Masons, they, they like the capstone. They like it a lot. The capstone, therefore, says Manly P. Hall, the capstone, therefore, is the epitome of the entire structure. Now, listen. Thus, the pyramid may be likened to the universe and the capstone to man. Following the chain of analogy, the mind is the capstone of man, the spirit, the capstone of the mind, and God, the epitome of the whole, the capstone of man the spirit. As a rough and unfinished block, man is taken from the quarry and by the secret culture of the mysteries gradually transformed into a true and perfect pyramidal capstone. The temple is complete only when the initiate himself becomes the living apex, listen, through which the divine power is focused into the diverging structure below. You get what they're teaching? Man becomes a god. Here's more pictures. These are Masonic temples. You see, the, you see the pyramid up there? Now, you say, did Russell ever go to a lodge? I have no idea. I know he had the same spirit because he followed the same, the same symbols and he taught the same things. He actually outwardly spoke against Freemasonry, but he followed the same symbols and signs and illumination that was taught by Freemasonry. These are, these are symbols that are at Masonic. That's a Masonic order, uh, a Masonic lodge, some type here. Okay, this is the dollar bill. You see the capstone at the top? There's two pyramids here. You see the one below, and then you see the one above. As is above, so is below. Yeah. The die, Manly P. Hall said this about the capstone. By the way, do you think it's an accident that your dollar has the capstone? 
the all-seeing eye at the top. What is that eye of? The eye of Horus, which is the eye of what? Yeah, it's, it's illumination. You see the light? Right. The light comes from where? The capstone, yeah, Satan. So who's the capstone? Who's the light of the lodge? Remember that? Well, some of you have never heard that. Go back and listen. If you've never heard, some, some of you may not understand what I'm talking about. Go back and listen to my Freemasonry video that I did. The light of the lodge is Lucifer. Okay? Um, why I preach against Freemasonry, it's called. Um, if you see that symbol right there, that capstone is illumination. That makes man a god. Who promised us in Genesis, promised mankind in Genesis, ye shall be as gods. The serpent, Lucifer, promised them godhood. Promised that they would live forever. The dying God shall rise again, said Manly P. Hall. The secret room in the house of the hidden places shall be rediscovered. It happened. All of this time it's been going on for the last 100 years or so. Ever since the occult, of the, the occult invasion. Ever since the rise of spiritism. Ever since the revised version of the Bible came out. Ouch. The pyramid again shall stand as the ideal emblem of solidarity, inspiration, aspiration, resurrection, and regeneration. Now, you do understand that when Manly P. Hall said this, this wasn't the great seal wasn't there yet. Manly P. Hall was working with somebody, or I can't think of the man's name. Remember the man that worked with Roosevelt to get the great seal? Anyway, doesn't matter. Another devil. Anyway, but... They all had the same spirit. This is the great seal. This was, this was put on here on purpose. Because, dude, I'm a, I'm a white American from the Midwest. I mean, I don't just walk around and be like, hey, dude, look, my, look at my pyramid with the all-seeing eye. I mean, dude, check it out. I mean, dude, nothing says Americana like a pyramid with an eyeball sticking on it. I mean, nothing says Americana cheese and hamburgers and hot dogs and baseball and, oh, all-seeing eyes on your dollar bill. Novus Order Seclorum, right? No, nothing says, nothing says America like that, right? I mean, nothing at all. <laughs> hey, I think I'll put this on the dollar, and every American's like, well, hey, that's pretty cool. Why is it on there? Nobody asks, like, anybody asks, like, why is that on your dollar? Like, what's that doing there anyway? Like, when you think some Christians would just ask one day, be like, hey, why'd you guys stick this on the dollar bill? Like, what's that eye doing there? I bet she does. <laughs> right, and, and, and this symbol is always occultism. It's, it's always in the occult everywhere. It's, it's the eye of Horus. It's right there. Okay, so here's your pyramid. Novus Order Seclorum. What, what does that mean? A new world order. And on the other side is in God we trust. Which God? That one. That's the God they trust. That's the God they all unite from. That's why I don't say one nation under God and put my hand over my heart and do that. Why? Because they're talking about him and I ain't talking about him. Everybody coming together in America doing that. Are you nuts? There's Muslims. There's all kinds of different religions out there. There's the, there's the, the God of Roman Catholicism. There's the God of Mormonism. There's the God of the JWs. There's all these other gods. Well, they're not my God, so I'm not going to put my hand on my heart and say that. Okay, here we go. <sighs> Breathe, okay. As the passing sands of time bury civilization upon civilization beneath their weight, the pyramid shall remain as the visible covenant between eternal wisdom and the world. This time may yet come when the chants of the illuminated shall be heard once more in its ancient passageways. And the master of the hidden house shall await in the silent place for the coming of that man who, casting aside the fallacies of dogma and tenet, seeks simply truth and will be satisfied with neither substitute nor counterfeit. What is he? T who is he talking about, Joshua? That's it. That's the capstone. That's, that's Russell. That's Russell's symbol. That's what he stood for. This is mainly P. Hall talking, but I'm telling you, it's the same spirit. 
Manly P. Hall said in Secret Teachings of All Ages, which I don't recommend reading at midnight. It's really weird. But anyway, um, Manly P. Hall said the phoenix will rise again. Well, there it is. Rising up out of the ashes, right? It's coming right there. There's your 13 stars above. All kinds of fun stuff. Anyway, um, let's see. The obsession with pyramids and Egyptian Freemasonry and symbolism was prevalent with Russell. He loved it. He was fascinated with it. The sides of the Great Pyramid. Now, this is mainly P. Hall said this, but I want you to understand something because this is going to bleed into the teachings of Russell. I'm going to make it clear. I'm not stating that Manly P. Hall and Russell knew each other. and I, They don't have to. They have the same spirit. If you operate under the same spirit, you don't have to know each other. You just have the same spirit. The sides of the Great Pyramid face the four cardinal angles. Now, let me stop here and say this to you. I, I didn't include this information because it's just a little too spooky, and I didn't want to read it because it was kind of weird, but... The watchtower, the word watchtower, is witches use the word watchtower. And they talk about the four cardinal angles and directions. And they talk about the, those spirits, right? And that's, anyway, the watchtower is where they get the light. The watchtower is where they, where they get power. Enough said. I'm not going to go into it anymore. Because you're going to see in this teaching as we keep going that the JWs believe the same thing. They were just very subtle the way they said it. The sides of the Great Pyramid face the four cardinal angles, the latter signifying, according to El Eliphas Levi, the extremities of heat and cold, south and north, and the extremities of light and darkness. Look at the mixture of light and darkness, the hybrid, light and darkness. That's Masonic order. As is above, so is below. Sons of God, daughters of men, same thing. Generative principle, same thing. The, triangle, the triangular form of the pyramid also is similar to the posture assumed by the body during the ancient meditative exercises. The mysteries taught that the divine energies from the gods descended upon the top of the pyramid. Okay, all right, you started. You getting it now? You're going to find out what the JWs say about where they, that they got light, and they got it from spirits and angels taught it to him and he's got his capstone there and that light descends on the top of that capstone the triangular for okay over right here let's see who which was likened to an inverted tree with its branches below and its roots at the apex from this inverted tree the divine wisdom is disseminated by streaming down the diverging sides and radiating throughout the world Now, the NIV calls the, the NIV 1984 edition of the NIV calls Christ the capstone. Clarence Larkin called Christ the capstone in his monumental work, so to speak. Uh, turn to, turn to, let's, let's turn to Ephesians chapter 2. There's two witnesses in the old to the caps, to the, to the cornerstone, okay? And two witnesses in the New Testament to the cornerstone. Christ is the cornerstone, amen? He's the chief cornerstone, all right, so we're going to go to Ephesians. The cornerstone is not the capstone. All right? Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 20. The Bible says, And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God throughout or through the Spirit. Now, 1 Peter 2, verse number 5 says, or verse number 4, we'll go back to there, says, To whom coming is unto a, li a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Who, where does confusion come from? It comes from Satan. It says if you believe in the chief cornerstone, you won't be confounded. Right? Today there is very little mention of the Great Pyramid amongst the scholars of the Watchtower. Judge Rutherford, Russell's successor, he made a point to distance himself from the teaching. He said this, This teaching was absolutely torn apart and discarded by Rutherford in the Watchtower in 1928. After Russell had died, he said this, Then Satan put his knowledge in dead stone, which may be called Satan's Bible. I want you to pay attention very closely, please. 
Who found, let's, 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 okay, class, let's go back to A. Who did we say founded the Jehovah's Witnesses? What was his name? Russell. Now, watch what Rutherford says about the foundation of the watchtower. Russell would be the foundation of the watchtower. He is the founder of the Watchtower Society. He is the founder of the Jehovah's Witnesses. The predecessor to him is saying this about him. He was a disciple of Russell. He was recruited by Russell. Now watch the satanic swerve. He said, Then Satan put his knowledge in dead stone, which may be called Satan's Bible, and not God's stone witness, in erecting the pyramid, of course. Satan would put in it some truth, because that is his method of practicing fraud and deceit. Watchtower, 1928. Wait, did he just say that the founder of the JWs was deceived by Satan? So then if you were in that room and he said that, wouldn't you be like, well, why are we all here? The guy that wrote all those books, he was a liar and he was deceived by Satan. Why are we all standing here? Let's go back to the Baptist church. Right? Wrong. Because when you get deceived by Satan, you just keep going down the rabbit hole even farther. That's what happens. Was Rutherford implying that Russell, the religion founder, the religion's founder, was guided by Satan to promote this teaching? It is astounding that after using pyramids to prop up the 1914 teaching for so many decades that such a dramatic change would occur. But what does Deuteronomy tell us about these false prophets and their prophecies? Deuteronomy 18.20 says, But the prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet has spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. He's a liar. What did our, what did our text talk about in 2 Corinthians chapter 11? False apostles, deceitful workers. Transformed, right? Judge Rutherford took over the watchtower right after that. But the witchcraft to follow was much worse than under Russell. Oh, it gets deeper. That is just like so, I mean, I got plenty of time. It's only 1130. Yeah. All right. So the witchcraft under, under Rutherford is way worse. And it's so much more blatant. It's, it's so much more in your face blatant that it, you can't even deny it. Even if you wanted to, you couldn't deny it. It's right there. Satan was just beginning to use this watchtower, though. Remember, those symbols that are used, they call all the devils in. That's what they do. That's why they use them. That, you have to understand, symbols to Freemasons is a language. They're speaking a language. That's why they use them. It's a language. Have you ever had a Jehovah's Witness knock on your door? Now, wouldn't you like to have this on CD and hand it to him and say, why don't you listen to this? Take this home with you. Ryan's going to put the, Ryan doesn't know this yet, but he's going to put this in booklet form. We're going to make a booklet out of this whole thing called a Watchtower of Witches. And the whole thing, we're going to cover all of these messages that I put, they're going to go into one book. And we're going we're to publish that book. Well, free, of course. Okay, so there was a book that was written that chronicled the demonic activity of the Watchtower. It was called Demonism in the Watchtower. Now, the man that wrote the book, Demonism, and we're going to talk about that in a few minutes, but the man that wrote that, he actually held the JW Doctrine still. He just left the Watchtower, but he had everything documented, letters that he wrote, letterhead, everything. Death certificates of people that died from their miracle cures. We'll get into that. That's like the next message, not, not today. Anyway, but a man named Ken Raines wrote a booklet titled, Was Rutherford a Spirit Medium? And he took quotes in context from Rutherford's own writings, which detail his involvement with spiritism and its practices. This is now we're going to get down. Let me see. What slide am I on? Oh, good, man. I got plenty of time. See? All right. Let me go back to where I was at here. Ken Raines wrote a booklet. He, he, he quotes from his book, 
and the resources. If he was not a witch, he sure did play one. Rutherford admitted angels gave him instructions. He said, he said, Ken Rain's comment says, he said, the Watchtower Society's second president, Judge J.F. Rutherford, claimed angels enlightened him with God's interpretation of Scripture. He said, it, listen, <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I'm going to show you the quotes. He said, invisible spirits transmitted the interpretations as well as organization instructions inaudibly in his, into his mind. Rutherford stated that these claims were not spiritism. You see how he changes the definition of spiritism but still practices it? That's what devils do. That's how they handle it. Okay, a book by Magnany, this, this Dwayne, he's an XJW. He said this at the XJW meeting. So they had this meeting of XJWs that had been saved out of the Jehovah's Witnesses. And he, and he was a former Jehovah's Witness, a very high-level one, and he said this. In his groundbreaking lecture, Angels of the New Light, he said at the Witnesses Now for Jesus XJW convention in, in New England, Pennsylvania, he reviewed the Rutherford heir of the Watchtower Society and Rutherford's claims and involvement in the occult. He discussed Rutherford's claim that what he wrote was not due to the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit, but due to angels who transmitted the information telepathically into his mind. He just said, no, the Holy Spirit didn't give it to me. Angels gave it to me. Magnani reviewed some of his research into the societies, which, by the way, that word just reminds me of the Jesuits, but that's, that's for another day, into the society's involvement in the occult and their occult beliefs, such as their concept of Jehovah as an organism living in Plato's star cluster. Good story. Not so much. Salvation of honest demons. Did you catch it? Did you catch it? He said salvation of honest demons. I'm not kidding you. I know people follow them too. Their endorsement of the automatic writing book, Angels and Women. Now, why would a guy, I, I have a question for you. Let's go back. Remember the, what, did the, what was the symbol on, Ruth, on uh, Russell's grave? Okay, the caps, right? Okay. So why would a guy that had a pyramid, why would he, why would he authorize a book to be given to JWs called Angels and Women? What is he teaching? Yeah. Well, isn't that funny? Now, why would he do that? Well, because he was a witch. <laughs> That's why he did it. He was a witch. Ah, this, it, it really isn't that hard when you start to dissect it. Angels and women. And basic doctrines compared to Johannes Grieber. Anybody ever heard of Johannes Grieber? Yeah. The point of the lecture, he said, was that Rutherford was a channel of communication for demons and thus a writing and inspirational medium. And then Ken Rain said, I began to collect Watchtower material, particularly from the Rutherford era, to research this for myself. He goes, man, this is too much. i got to hear this. i got to study this. i got to find out what this guy believed. Rains goes on to say, I read about three or four pages of Rutherford's comments and was convinced he was a spirit medium. I purchased a copy of Rutherford's 1933 book, Preparation. From Dwayne himself, I believe, and check Dwayne's quoting of pages 36 and 37, which I found accurate. I was aware of a few other statements as well by Rutherford to the same effect, so I was quickly convinced this was a basic claim of Rutherford and not an offhand remark. I decided to look at the book's index to look for other references to angels enlightening the remnant. Yeah. This is the book, Preparation. Here's what the judge said. Enlightenment proceeds from Jehovah. And is given to the faithful anointed. The remnant are instructed by the angels of the Lord. The remnant do not hear audible sounds because such is not necessary. Jehovah has provided his own good way to convey thoughts to the minds of his anointed ones. Yeah, it's called a Bible. You should look into it sometime. 
This is the voice of God. This is where we find the voice of God. When I say God showed me something, he showed it in here. He showed me in his word. What is he saying? No, he spoke to me in my mind and telepathically, and angels taught me. Preparation for what? In the golden age, November 8th, 1933, he said this, God uses angels to teach his people now on earth. (laughs) Uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verse number 1, please. When we turn there here, let's go to the word of God here. Um, Look, if one of you come up to me and tell me that angels taught you something, we're going to be having a different conversation. Right? Hebrews chapter 1, verse number 1. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners, excuse me, spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by what? By his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. The Bible says that God speaks through his word and by his son. Right. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of God. How do my sheep hear my voice and follow me? Go read the book of Psalms where it talks about the voice of the Lord right here. Rutherford claimed this. Are you ready? Here we go. That no one can understand the Bible or specific portions thereof until God's due time to reveal it. When the right time arrived, God revealed the proper explanation or interpretation to the leadership leadership class of the JWs alone. Well, that sounds like Rome. Well, only the priests can understand. You can't have the Bible in the vulgar tongue because only the priests could understand it. You can't possibly understand it, you dummy. Now listen to us or you're going to hell. You know why those JWs work so hard? Because they have a works-based righteousness. This is the reason Rutherford frequently stated that he wrote what he wrote was not his opinion or interpretations of Scripture. They were God's interpretation. Angelic channeling. Rutherford claimed that God used angels to teach the remnant, not the Holy Spirit. He said the Holy Spirit stopped teaching the remnant, according to Rutherford, in 1918. Oh, it's just like, according to my calculations, in 1918, the Holy Spirit just stopped talking. And then angels just started talking. Where'd you get that figure at, Rutherford? That's a really neat number you got there. Everything written by Rutherford from books and booklets, the Watchtower magazine, came from angels. Listen. Listen, are you ready? These invisible ones the Lord uses to put in the hands of his faithful servant class. That is the man clothed with linen, the fiery message from his word, or judgments written and which is to be used as directed. The resolutions adopted by conventions of God's anointed people, booklets, magazines, and books published by them contain the message of God's truth and are from the Lord Jehovah and provided by him through Christ Jesus and his under officers. The interpretation of prophecy, therefore, is not from man, but is from Jehovah. Through angels, he's saying. Angels come down and teach us what we're supposed to do. So everything we're teaching, now remember, remember, if the Holy Spirit, well, he didn't call it the Holy Spirit. If Holy Spirit taught Russell, but then in 1918 stopped teaching Russell, and angels came down and taught Rutherford, well, the prophecies were wrong that they taught Russell twice. And what you're about to see that Rutherford taught, those angels didn't teach him right. So therefore, what kind of angels taught him? Devils. Angelic oracles? Rutherford claimed to receive oracles or messages. 
Dude, if any guy told you this, if any other guy, if some guy on the street told you this, I don't care if he had a suit and a tie on or his wife had a long skirt on and everything else and they acted like fundamentalists and all this. If they told you that, well, listen, like everything I'm teaching you right now, an angel came down and told me yesterday. Right. Like that guy. Yeah, exactly. Okay, here he goes. He says, an oracle may be properly defined as a speech or message proceeding or coming from an unseen power, given an answer to an inquiry. So you're asking invisible angels to give you answers when you have all the answers you need right here. It was from amongst the Jews that Jehovah selected all his prophets and to whom he spake or delivered his messages. An oracle is therefore a speech or message that prompts and directs action of the creature. Satan is the mimic God and hence attempts to counterfeit. To this end, he has used and still uses wicked spirit creatures to deliver speech or messages to those who are willing to give heed thereto. You mean like you? <laughs> Such has ever been a part of the practice of satanic religions says Rutherford. <laughs> the priest of such satanic religions is said to receive a message from the unseen, which he delivers to others, and thus the priest claims to be in communication with a god. However, these priests do not disclose that the god with whom they are in communication is the devil or some of his invisible assistants. So see, he's writing in these magazines these things, but he's actually teaching them. Hey, I've been around guys like that. <laughs> well, that was weird. <laughs> that was kind of strange. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah. So then Rutherford was receiving a message from angels that told him things that were contrary to the word of God. You understand that, right? He would, these angel beings, these angels were telling him things that they weren't in the Bible. Rutherford was finding new light. Then how was he, how was he to know if they were not lying spirits or devils that lie in wait to deceive? He has nothing to test it by. But we do have something to try all things by. The King James Bible, 1 John chapter 4, verse number 1. The Bible says this, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Now, by the way, Understand, their Bible interpretation changes that. Why? Because it's a false spirit. It's an antichrist spirit. It's a devil. And that's who Rutherford got his light from. But no, you don't understand, he had the Bible, and they were good, and they dressed good, and they taught good things, and, and they were moral people, and this and that, and all these other things. Yeah, I don't care what... What he taught, though, was satanic. And that's how Satan works. And that's why in these end times, God, that's, why, that's why in these end times, God is burning off the dross and showing what is true and what is not. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. This is that capstone. Mm -hmm. Where have you have heard that it should come? And even now already is it in the world. It's already there, friend. Already there. The Watchtower made this statement. They said, since we do not practice spiritism, we are free of domination by demons. They go on to say, the Lord used the watchtower to announce these truths. Doubtless he used his invisible deputies to have much to do with it. This is not what some may regard as spiritism by any means, but it does mean that God can direct his people without an audible communication with them. Okay, so here's what Rutherford is doing. He is bragging on the fact, well, we're not saying we hear audible voices. It's just those thoughts are telepathically put into our minds. Look, look, look at the words again, please. He says, doubtless he used his invisible deputies to have much to do with it. 
So he is admitting that why do you need angels to interpret the Bible for you? You don't. In fact, you're not supposed to because you're not supposed to worship the host in heaven and you're not supposed to communicate with them. You're not supposed to pray to them. You're not supposed to talk to them. He said, this is not what some may regard as spiritual. No. <laughs> look, pay no attention. <laughs> right? Just, yeah, look over here. Don't look over there. Don't, don't worry about that. No, that's not what pe people call that spiritism. But hey, no. That's not what it is. Listen, it's not. Well, Rutherford, just because you say it's not doesn't mean it isn't. You just told us that invisible deputies come to you and tell you things. Like, that's not good. Like, <laughs> that's really bad. Why? Have you ever noticed how the Seventh-day Adventists, the Jehovah's Witch, I mean, what did she, uh, Ellen G. Witch? I know. People out there, if they hear this, they're going to be like, Pastor, you just need to be nicer. You, people would listen to you if you were nicer. I know. If I was like a witch like these guys, they'd listen to me, wouldn't they? But I prefer being that voice that cries in the wilderness. Prepare you the way, Lord, make us. I, I, pre I, I prefer the rough and rugged to wake you up. I, I could. But, you know, here's the thing. It is what, it, that is what they're doing. He's communicating with invisible deputies. Now, first of all, if anybody came into your church and told you, now listen, last night, pastor, last night, invisible deputies came to me. <laughs> well, did they have badges? <laughs> did, they, did they have guns? Did, did they have badges? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did, 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 they, did, they have, did they have guns? I mean, did they have a cowboy hat? Did they, were they wearing spurs? I mean, like, first of all, what are you talking to them for? Yeah, isn't that weird? That would be weird. That would be wrong. That would be sinful. That would mean that you're communicating with devils that God forbid. And why would you ask an angel to give you interpretation of the Bible when the Holy Ghost of God has a ministry? Rutherford said spirits invaded his mind. Seems logical. Right? Rutherford said spirits invaded his mind. Yes, he did. He claimed, he claimed the Holy Spirit was removed and angels taught JWs. He said the Holy Spirit was completely removed. Yeah, I don't believe they ever learned anything from the Holy Spirit. Ever. He said this, surely the holy angels of Jehovah God are clothed with power to put questions in the minds of those on earth who are devoted to God. Yeah, questions. Confusion? Devils. It is not necessary for us to know just how this is done, but there could be no doubt about the power of the deputies of the Lord. All right, first of all, you can search all through. There's no deputies of the Lord in here, all right? Not there. Where do they, where, where do they get that from? Devils. Big, huge, Donald Trump-sized devils. <laughs> Many of them, big ones. The remnant are instructed by the angels of the Lord. But listen, I thought we had a more sure word of prophecy. Don't we have a more sure word of prophecy? I mean, I thought we did, right? I thought we had a more sure word of prophecy that we would take heed unto, right? Hmm. He said the remnant are instructed by the angels of the Lord. The remnant do not hear audible sounds. He sounds weird. It sounds weird. Precious doesn't hear audible sounds. <laughs> right? Sounds kind, of, sounds kind of weird, doesn't it? I'm sorry, it just does. Like the way he's saying it, the remnant doesn't hear that. It's like, okay, go back to your cage. Put the straitjacket back on him. 
The remnant do not hear audible sounds, because such is not necessary. Jehovah has provided his own good way to convey thoughts to the minds of his anointed ones. Yeah, it's called the Bible, and he said, read it. Thy word have I hidden my heart that I might not sin against thee. Right? The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver, tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. This is where you get light. This is where you get truth. When somebody wants to get you off of this and write their stupid books and write all kinds of things that are contrary to the word of God because, well, I had a feeling and God's leading me. Well, God ain't leading you away from that book, so it's the devil. The next time some joker says that to me, I'm going to tell him flat out. I don't care how long they've been an independent Baptist. I'm going to say, God ain't leading you against this book, you liar. You're being led by devils. You better repent and get right with God. Tired of hearing that excuse to disobey God and his word and everything else so you can go off and run, run on your own passion and emotions and do whatever you want to do. Same thing these guys. It's no different. Baptists do it too. That's right. Jehovah would employ his power through his angels to put in the minds of his servants to take the course that he would have them take. God put it into the minds of his people to declare what constitutes Satan's organization and to serve notice upon each branch thereof. Jehovah directs his own work, though we hear no audible voices. Okay, so I'm going to stop here with this one. We're going we're gonna to stop on this one right here. We'll actually stop here, and we'll go ahead and eat lunch here. We've been going for about an hour, I think, so that'll be good. I want to split this up a little bit for you. I've got about 20 more slides to go here, and we'll finish it up in the afternoon here. But let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for the truth of the scriptures. And Lord, thank you that we have an answer, Lord, because we can try the spirits by the word of God. And we have the truth. And Lord, we thank you for that. And Lord, we just pray that you'd bless us now. Bless the food to our bodies. Bless the time we have together, Lord. Thank you so much for all you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.